Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today, Bible study, we have Brother Gio, Brother Jave, Brother John, and Brother Nate. We'll be diving into John chapter 16, verses 16 to 33. To begin, we're going to start off with an opening prayer by Brother John. All right, the Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for this time that we're able to just come together and just look into your word. We pray, Holy Spirit, in this time that we're able to join together in fellowship, that you will illuminate your word to us. Feed us today, O oh God, for nourishment for today and nourishment for tomorrow, Lord. Bless each and every one that's here, those that are watching this program today and in the days to come. Give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat. Amen. Today we'll be leading by Brother Gia. So John 16, verse 16, NLT. In a little while, you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that, you will see me again. Some of the disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while, you won't see me, but then you will see me, and I am going to the Father. And what does he mean by a little while? <clears throat> we don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it. So he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said, in a little while, you won't see me, but a little while after that, you will see me again. I tell you the truth, you will, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. <laughs> you know, I read that and I just think about Mel, um, Jay. She always sing that song. You turn my weeping into <laughs> uh, It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor when a child is born. Her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, you will ask the father directly and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. If you haven't done this before, ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. Verse 25, I have spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I, I come from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, at last, you are speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need to question you. From this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus asks, do you finally believe? But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now. When you will be scattered, each one, go, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I, I have overcome the world. So, Ezra, what'd you get? <laughs> what'd you get, Ezra? So yeah, I was going to come at me with this question. Um, but I read this before we got on here, so I did have something to accumulate in my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. But uh, what I got from this is that the disciples were finally able to truly start understanding what Jesus was trying to say. Uh, it mentions that uh, in the way that Jesus was speaking more clearly to them, for them to um, really understand. And I like the comparison that Jesus mentioned with uh, the birth of a, a child. It's a painful process, just like how Jesus went on the cross to die for us. It was a painful process, but the end result was a result that everybody's happy with and you're able to rejoice. And him dying on the cross was able to uh, just wash away all of us and not but the blood of Jesus according to the song. That was cute. <laughs> that was real cute. <laughs>
Um, but yeah, you're right. Um, it, it, that is a good analogy because I don't understand why or how women can endure such pain and yet look to have more babies. I'm not sure how that works, but <laughs> Jesus hit the nail on the head when he made that analogy in terms of the amount of grief we will endure. Um, and then comparing that to the joy that we will have, we will have when Jesus comes back. Um, I just, I, I just want, I'm just curious, like the timing, like why did he wait so long? And, and, and then notice like how they just, they said, we now believe that you came from the father. I wonder if, I wonder if that's how Jesus looks at us, right? Like, yeah, we say we believe, we believe, we believe, but not until we like experience this crazy divine encounter that we can say, oh, you know what? Oh, I thought I believed before. I thought I was really about this life. And like, all right, now, for real, for real, now I believe. I wonder if there's just so much more that we have an experience with Christ to make us say, okay, now we really, really believe, you know? Like how much more in store like, does God have for us, you know? Still trying to process your question a little bit. I, part of it to me um, sounds a little, little bit, if I'm waiting for some grand thing to happen, something else to happen, then there resides a little bit of doubt in me. Um, I would start there. I don't really fully believe because I haven't seen or witnessed this grand thing happen or this grand event happen to really push me over the edge. I'm waiting for some something drastic, you know, to happen to really push me from that middle point of I believe a little bit, I don't believe a little bit, to the point where I really, really believe and I'm I'm fully sold out and I'm completely in. And, and I think um that, so that's one part of it, just, just to address that last part of your question. Um, and the other part, in the beginning that you were saying, can't uh, uh, repeat it verbatim, um, but I believe part of it is, is revelation and how we come to this place of really, really knowing God. And I remember you were saying something in the beginning, like, um, like I believe he is the Messiah or so, something like I can't remember very verbatim. I believe part of it is is is, is revelatory uh, as we encounter God and we go through our relationship with him and he reveals different things to us, right? So I may believe uh God is 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 a provider because I've seen what he's done in your life, Gio, right? Um but until I, he re reveals to me and then shows himself to me to really be Jehovah Jireh, uh, up until that point of revelation, and I, that, at that point, I really know him, okay, Jehovah Jireh, he, he, he really does this, because, yeah, I know it, because he did it for you, but now he's done it for me, so I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's what I'm getting at, it's like, we know these things of God, right, but it's like, until we can really experience and experience this characteristic of God for ourselves. Like, I think that is when it really, really sinks in. I mean, it's, it's clear that they believe, right? He said, said that, um, I think he asked him, who, who do you say I am, right? And he was like, the son of God. But I, I think it went over the top. Like they finally, it just really, it really hit when he said what he said to them in plain language. Somebody else is going to say something? Oh, yeah, that was just me. I just going to say I, I agree with both of you. I think it really shows. I love the analogy the Lord gives as far as even pregnancy. Um, pregnancy is a progress uh, as far as even our walk and our journey and even faith itself. I, I think a lot of times when we speak about faith, sometimes it's real easy to think that faith is supposed to be the big thing. It's supposed to be, okay, God's the healer. That means, all right, you know what? Boom, cancer is done. But you know what? There's a process towards that. It's, it's a journey towards it. Um, and even like it starts in the beginning, it's like in a little while, 
you won't see me anymore. But a little while after that, you'll see me again. And it's like the Lord's pretty much telling you, okay, you, you might not fully understand what I'm telling you. You might not fully understand the journey that you're going to walk on. But if you walk it through at the end, you'll see and you'll have joy at it. And still going back with the analogy of pregnancy, you know, when you first get that news, you know, that you're pregnant or that your partner is pregnant, you're like, wow, okay, there's life there. But the thing is this, you don't know what the baby's going to look like. You don't know how much the baby's going to weigh. You don't know what the destiny of that child is. So really all you're doing throughout a pregnancy is you're waiting in anticipation, believing God that he'll manifest itself that in the end of this, at nine months later, when this child is born, they're going to have joy. And of course, throughout those days, every day is not rosy. Every day is going to have, some days are going to have some trials. Some days are going to be just fine. Some days you're not going to sleep. Some days you're not going to eat. Some days you're going to eat and throw up. There's so many different things that go along the process of it. And in, in a way, it shows us, at, uh, for me, at least I'm going to take for the moment, our journey with God is not always going to have its easy days. It's not always going to have its sunshiny days. But the thing is, I'm believing that what God has put inside of me is meant to be birth. And when it is birth, I'll be able to turn around and say, God, you did it. God, you did it. God, this is what you were doing. And I think sometimes it's, I, I see it partially as doubt. And I just see it partially too as we just don't know. And that's the beautiful thing about faith is that you get to the place that the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart in the place that you say, God, I don't know what you're about to do, but I'm so sure that you're going to be the one that do that does it. And so you just, you wait, you wait, go through. And then at the end, boom, there it is. I think that's why if you came to, if you connect the dots from the text to how to make it apply like to everyday life, I think the thing is you have to understand their journey. This is a dude that had three years to impart such a heavy mission. And these were like the intimate 12 that would begin to give language for the world later on. Um, if you understand that context, and understanding like their worldview at the time and Jesus trying to bring the world to them, meaning understand, understand the kingdom. I, I look at it and then to parallel to today, it's the beauty of discipleship. Um, John used the motif as um, the progress, um, the progression, their growth. I think they, I think they, when they, when they saw what they said at the end of the text is really because, okay, I think I understand the why now, you know? Not that they didn't believe or not that they weren't. And and, and, and in it is, it's just the journey of believing. It's a, it's a growth process too. And they had to endure it in ways that we didn't have to because they had to really understand it. And these young men had to really be the ones to be the first runners with the message, you know? So th that analogy as he closed his discourse and also, you have to also see the role of the Holy Spirit in play because also he was talking about, you know, even when he said a little while I'm going to leave, it was just the, the world is going to be excited about his death, basically. You look, can literally look at it. When he's saying, that, listen, you're, you're going to see the joy of it when I come up again, when I, when I, when I rise again. And also, as you look in previous chapters, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, because now it's not going to just be me literally with you. I'm going to be in you. So that's what's going to make this discipleship. That's what's going to help make this journey. And John's all the talking about the progression. That's what's actually going to help you make it work. That's what's going to help you understand the journey, understanding it better by and by, as the mothers and them used to say. That's, that's who's going to help you make sense of a lot of things. So that was one of the things, just listening into the reading again, into that version that just kind of jumps out at me, that, that, that progression Pay attention to that analogy. You'll understand. So that, that's what stuck out to me in the, in the, in the initial reading. I, I like the, um, the part that isn't necessarily heavily preached. Um, that last verse, he says, in the, in the world, you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer. It's almost like a contradiction. Like, it's like, what do, what do you mean? I'm going to be excited about tribulation. But then right after that, he says, I have overcome the world. 
And I know a lot of the times um, we preach about, you know, how great it is to be a Christian and all the good stuff God can do. Like, like we focus a lot on the Jehovah Jireh, like how much he can provide for us and whatnot. But um, I think I was talking about this with Jay um, a little while back about what um, T.D. Jakes is preaching about how we have to endure some suffering. There's going to be some trials and tribulations. And like I was, a, a, I would say a lot different from what they're about to endure. Like they have to go out and preach this new word amongst the people, uh, amongst the, a group of religious, like heavy, like strict to the T, uh, believing in the Mosaic law. They have to endure something different. Um, whereas I guess in, in the last days, we we're we're enjoying something completely different. Like we have the freedom to go out and share the word, but are we doing that? You know, instead we're being how do I say? Um, I guess distracted, right? Or, or or taken away from the task that we're supposed to partake in by everything else in the world, or by the uh, the sufferings that we have to endure. And I I just think that. I think, I think I asked a question last week. I was just like, we're here in the quote unquote land of the free, right? And we have the freedom of speech in our constitution. Are we, are we taking advantage of that freedom of speech by going out and sharing the gospel? Like no, nobody's gonna come up to us and punch us in the face. <laughs> or try to stone us or try to kill us because we're sharing the gospel, like we have that freedom of speech. You know, are, are we, are we, you know, are we going to allow the tribulations that we face now in comparison to what they faced back then to get in the way of the task that Jesus has given us? I ain't even going for it. That question uh, speaks to something that I guess that jumped out to me in the scripture too for today. Um, so there's a part here in verse 25 to 28, the Lord's pretty much saying that, um, he's saying, I've spoken of these matters in figurative speech, but soon I'll stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. And I'll tie that into the question, which I think is actually an awesome question. I think, one, we haven't taken it fully advantage of our freedom of speech, but I think part of that is we don't know how to say the gospel. We don't know how to really communicate who Jesus is or what the gospel really is in this day i think a lot of times as far as our active communication we don't understand fully sometimes you know we, we hear it the way like you know um the disciples might have heard it, in parables and sometimes that's how we know to communicate it it sounds confusing to me so i'm gonna sound to make it sound confusing to you um but if we're able to get to the place to really allow holy spirit to navigate us i think he he's given us more ways to have freedom to communicate this gospel. Um, and really with that, I think we have so many more ways to communicate Christ today than they did back then, or even for our spiritual ancestors uh, 100 years ago, 150 years ago. There's so many different ways and means that we have to communicate, but we have to be able to navigate how to freely use it, or even uh, allow the Holy Ghost to move within us to be bold enough to say, hey, there's a problem, I know the answer. And it's not an answer that I can question or not the answer that I doubt. Uh, I've seen the process in me. Let me tell you about Jesus. I'm gonna tell you about this. I'm gonna tell you what he said, even to the point of realizing to you, part of the freedom of speech and communicating the gospel is there's flaws in us that still touch Jesus and Jesus still loves us. Even with the passage we read today, uh, for today's study, it's saying, Jesus said, I'm tell you plainly, um, you see me because my father sent me, my father loves me, my father loves you, and I'm going back to my father, the father that loves you enough that he sent and he gave me, loves us enough that now you're able to hear this message plainly without figurative speech, without parables, and now I'm able to go back. And not only am I going to go back to my father, I'm going to send someone to actually help you navigate this process, but we have to be able to let he that was sent to help us navigate that speak freely. So I, I, I hear the question and think of the scripture. No, I don't think we take advantage of it freely. I think sometimes we're afraid. Um, sometimes we, we question it. Uh, sometimes we don't realize the power behind the message that we have. Um, yeah, the gospel word 
back in the day for our, our elders and stuff like that, but do we really believe that the power of the gospel works now? Past the prosperity, past the cars, past the house, past the husband, past the wife. Do we believe at the end of the day, this gospel says we're able to be reconciled to our creator, that our creator loves us enough that he gave us only son and all we have to do is believe in him. Not saying you got to believe and walk with a doily on your head and a vestment on and walk around with a collar. But just simply, even if you got weed on your breath and you smell like you just came out the club. But the fact that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord sent up from above from the Father, you can't be saved. All you got to do is call on him. Amen. I like that. I like that. Um. I, I agree with with Rich outside. I like to add on. <laughs> I like to add on to the he made um very valuable point. Uh well, in my in my early days of serving the Lord, I didn't know that in order to serve you have to suffer. And that's that's a whole sermon. That's a whole sermon title right there. In order to serve, you have to suffer. Because everybody they have a misconception that this Christian walk is all butterflies. You got red carpet, Jesus coming down, touching you, the angel appearing to you. But it is, it is, how old are you, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm 17. <laughs> 17. I'll, I'll be 18. Be game for like six months, and now, yeah. now <laughs> you know, you got to suffer. You, you got to get in the trenches and, and, and travail. Sounds like he was in glory for a second with that one. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm going to say he might have been safe here. I said, I don't know what's Maybe you got to save from young. Or you, just, you just heard enough. You know? Yeah, exactly. And now you're embracing <laughs> it for yourself. You might have heard it before, but. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I just. I, you're I, new to it now. And now you're embracing it as the reality. Yes, I am. I'm. I'm fairly new to it now because, um, I'm like I mentioned earlier, I had a misconception that in order to serve, that you didn't have to suffer. But uh, over the last three years, that that message that I've applied to my life a lot. Uh, we're going through a lot of different situations, and I just want to put that word out to everybody. In order to serve, you have to suffer. This road is not going to be smooth. It's going to be a whole lot of bumps, trials and tribulation, but it's going to be worth it in the end. It's, it's no different from your regular life. You'll go through trials and tribulation, but you have to move forward in order to accomplish the um, main mission, and the main mission is to get to heaven. So if you want to get to that main mission, you got to endure everything. But the Bible said, that God is going to be there to help you endure with it. You're not going to be walking on your own. You're not going to be by yourself. His word said that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. God is going to be there the, the whole time. You just got to come. You just got to come to him. And in the word, uh, this this chapter, I don't remember what scripture, but Jesus says, you could go to God, ask him using my name. If you need help, go to God, uh, ask him using uh, the son's name. Because God is going to continue to be there each and every day with us. We just got to uh, stay committed to him. Because Jesus is committed and God is committed to us. We just got to uh, reciprocate that same commitment and continue to uh, work and continue to serve and continue to strive. But overall, guys, always remember, in order to serve, you you, you need to suffer. I go for it. I got, now I'm about to throw a whole wrench. Because I keep, I'm hearing the word suffer. And it's very easy to interpret that suffering is something if you go as a bad thing. But can it in some ways be interpreted too that when you, the word says we have to suffer, it's just saying that we simply have to learn? I mean, do we really have to go through an adverse circumstance for us to suffer? Because um, at the same time too, it doesn't mean necessarily that sometimes it's very easy to interpret that as God wants you to go through. You're not going to find God unless you go through the storm. And one thing um, I definitely learned, at least in my walk, is sometimes I don't need to go through that storm to learn. Um, I can hear God's testimony or God's story through you, and I can learn through you. I, God bless everyone that made the mistake that I don't have to make it. Um, but I just want to throw that out there sometimes. And sometimes every time I hear that scripture, it makes me think. It's like, well, Lord, are you really saying that we do have to go through each trial? Or are there some things that really trying to say that, Lord, we can learn? We can learn. So is suffering the actual process of going through? Or is suffering also the learning about life itself and going through? I, I think that, that's an amazing point. Um, 
because oftentimes we hear this word suffering, it carries this negative connotation, right? That as Brother John said, you're going to go through some stuff, you're gonna lose your job, your house, your family, or, you know, you just think something bad is going to happen. I think um, sometimes, I think I told you, we, we talked about this too, G, a while ago, that um, suffering is, is perspective, right? Um, that it doesn't have to be this dramatically bad thing that's happening, right? Um, but as Brother John said, it could be a, a time of, of learning, right? Um, it could be a time of God preparing you, right? Um, but you have to allow, and this is where your, your trust in the Holy Spirit and a relationship with God comes in. Um, how can I now navigate this season or this area that I'm unfamiliar with? And that, that's really what it is. It's it's an area that you're unfamiliar with, that you've never experienced before, right? But but who are you going to turn to now, right? The Holy Spirit, and he's going to guide you and, and show you. And, and I, 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 lo, I'm with you all the way, right? I'm not going to leave you. Um, so I think very much a lot of times suffering is perspective. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to change our perspective, then we, we can learn that lesson, Brother John, a lot sooner than it takes us sometimes, right? Because um, in our suffering, sometimes we, we backtrack. Right, and we lose sight of God in the process, and we take our eyes off Him. Um, but that's really the time where it's uh, learn, my son, my daughter, keep your eye focused on me, right? Keep keep your mind stayed on me, and I'm going to show you and navigate you through this unfamiliar, or uncharted waters. Also, to that, um, I agree with everything too. We we can't negate because you know the thing is suffering. Suffering has such a wide pendulum because how we define it. We can't negate that our definition is going to be different than maybe for somebody that may be viewing you from another country or, or, or another class or another, you know, we, we don't negate that. But what we're also saying is that there's a learning um, process in the suffering. You know, there is, uh, there's a reason for it. It's called refining, you know, a term that we don't hear or, or, or dive in too much. Um, some of it is really to, ref you know, all of it is really to refine us and to mature us. So we can't, we can't really run from the process. You know, it's a part of our process. Every believer, no matter what state, no matter what uh, title you may have, or no matter where or capacity you serve, it is a part of the growth process. You know, the disciples had to endure it in a different means, in a different light. But um, honestly. The, the joy of it was that they, be, they they saw themselves becoming more like Christ, even in their suffering. Even if you read down the line, how they ended up even passing, even how they died. Um, Peter, for example, being crucified in reverse, and he saw the joy in it because it was like, okay, I see what he was talking about at this point in the text in John chapter 16, that I'm actually becoming more like the person when, that I, I was called to follow from the very beginning. And that's also the beauty of the discipleship too. That's the beauty of the journey. And um, as you grow, you'll learn. The more you learn, you understand and comprehend. And that's what makes us able to, to what John was saying before, communicate the gospel because we understand, we, can, we, we understand what he was saying, Jesus was saying, and we're the bridge to connect mankind back to him as well. So that's just my thought on that with the suffering aspect. We don't negate it because it's real. But we can't just only have the negative connotation of because that it, it, won't, it won't really appeal to somebody to want to follow him because I'm already, I'm already suffering as it is. I'm in a pandemic. I'm going through this. You know what I'm saying? It's not really appealing. So <laughs> if you, you know, to bring the hope that is Christ and to know that in the process of really maturing in hope, I will go through some things. I will experience seasons where things are unclear. Then, you know, Okay, this is making sense. Okay, I get what Peter's saying. Think it not strange in First Peter 4 when the fire trials come to try you. Okay, it's a part of my growing up. And now I have his help through his lens. I like that part where we say um, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us when it's time to share because we don't necessarily know how to, right? Um, so I, I guess... Like you said, that, that has to come with a certain level of maturity. And that in terms will come with your learning through your suffering or your refining, as you say. I, I like I like that word better, refining. It, it has a 
more positive <laughs> connotation with it. It sounds better. Um, but then in terms of um, having the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you to share the gospel, I look back at what he says to, um, what was it in verse, verse 24, it looks like. It says, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. It says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. I just think like some people may look at that as like Jesus is a genie, right? Just rub the magic lamp, boom, right? And then, you know, now we have what we want. But I think as you continue to grow and mature and, and, and go through your refining, I think that what we ask the Father will ultimately change. At first, I didn't, you know, you hear about it all the time, but you don't really realize that there's a change, there's a shift until, you, until you've grown to see that your will, like what you're asking God for, it, it changes it. It, it. It's really a shift and you find yourself, truly speaking, like I can attest to this, you find yourself asking God, all right, what do you want? Like, this is what I want. I want to do what you want to do. I want to, to, I'm asking for your help because I want to fulfill your purpose ultimately for you to be glorified. And I don't know, I guess my question to, to the group is just, when did that shift happen? Like, when did you stop asking God for the stuff? Stop, stop seeking God's hand and, and seek God's face. Like, when did that shift happen? Can you even recall it? I mean, it's probably, it's probably been so long ago. I mean, or even maybe it's still happening. Who knows? That's funny. I'll jump on that. I was about to say, I don't remember the first time, but thankfully, <laughs> I you got to get to the place you keep allowing it to happen. Um, and I think that's what also keeps you faithful on the journey too. Because even, you know, we we all have seasons um, that we're, we're hot, we're, we're just red hot, you know, we, we felt the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost knocked us down, we done spoke in tongues, ran around, we're like, oh God, and you know, you feel like you can walk down the street, wave your hand, everybody fall out and get healed, but then, you know, reality is, it's not always like that, um, but it's, it's I've, I guess for me, my moment was the moment I realized, um, as I'm in constant pursuance of him, he's still in pursuance of me. And um, what that is, is, is really allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to me in the small things. Um, and sometimes you feel like you're crazy. You know, sometimes you feel a breeze and just go, oh, thank you, God, for the breeze. Uh, and, you know, and things like that. But it's just really in the everyday things of life, um, really getting to the place that you see God in the little things. Or even, um, I know, you know, there's a cliche scripture that is true. Romans 8, 28, you know, all things work together for those. Uh, for the good of those that beloved the Lord and the call called his purpose. And I, I think for me, one good time, I guess, for a personal testimony, I remember one time I realized all things, all things, and you, you really get to the moment where you're just like, well, I lost my job. I can't pay my bill. You know, my car broke down. But then you realize, yo, God really is still good. Um, and you just really just feel like, wait a minute, what kind of foolishness is that? But then you realize everything everything that you're able to allow God to step into uh, gives you that refresh, gives you that, that refresh to say, I find you again. I, I, I seek you again. And then you also realize, like I said, it's not just you pursuing him, but you realize God's still giving you opportunities that you see him. And as you do that, that causes you to keep growing and growing as long as you allow it to be an actual, it's like an actual relationship, as cliche as it sounds. The walk with God is genuinely a relationship. You know, when you're with someone, it can't just be like, okay, you're my boo thing, and I don't talk to you for three months, and you think when you cross paths again, you're going to have that same level of intimacy. No, it has to be consistently I communicate with you, even if it's just something as plainly as, I don't like you today. I don't know. I'm, I'm saving enough to say, God, some days, God, I don't like what you did today. I don't like it. And he comes back and just says, I understand, but let me show you what I'm doing. And you just go, all right, cool. So that's that's my two cents with that. So it's not just a one time. It's, it's I, I got to make myself constantly find God. That's interesting you said that. I think I was um in the study early last week. And I was just like, I, 
I want certain things about me to be changed or I'm looking for a refining process. And the Holy Spirit said it plain as day. He said, listen, if you want to change, you need more of me. Like I, I love what Javay revealed to me. He was like, it's not how much of the Holy Spirit we have is how much the Holy Spirit has of us. Like we have to give ourselves more to the Holy Spirit to work. And he was like, you want to change, you want to be refined, you want to look at the world from a different lens, then you got to sit with me. Like, like, how would you know what to do and where to, and how to look at things and how to, um, like, like my favorite example is when Jesus is talking to the woman at the well and his questions, they all, they all, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they all looked. They all looked at, uh, or they all attacked the root of her problem. Like he didn't. He didn't approach her from the surface. He, he approached her from the root of the problem. And he's just like, yo, if you want to be able to do that, when troubles and trials are coming your way, or if you want to be changed, you want this thing that's inside of you to come out of you, then come to my word daily, like every day. I need you to get into the word. I need you to sit with me. And as I always say, you know, Jay can attest to this, take me with you moment by moment as you transition. And, and, I'm, and I'm like, I'm this week, I was trying so hard to be intentional about it. I was like, OK, I'm going to leave my house. I'm going to get in my car. Spirit, come with me. I want to get out of my car. And then when I get into the field, when I'm at work. I need you to come with me. Like, I'm just thinking, I'm like, yo, just like, give me a scripture to meditate on. Like, I, I just, I just want to always know and acknowledge that you're with me. I'm with you. You have my hand. I have your hand and we're going hand in hand together. And whatever is about to come, I want to look at it through the lens of the Holy Spirit. And, and I, and I, I like that you said that, like, it's not just like a, a little spring fling, a little summertime boo, you know, you see it only on, you know, every now and again, it's, it's, it's a consistent, relationship like if you want intimacy then you have to get into it in order for you to see right and that's that's just my take um for me with the encounter factor and those are some beautiful analogies um you your your answer to the question if you if, if, it, if it was in, in the form of a song but then i came to my mind was the lyrics from jonathan and reynolds make a room that that always gives you the opportunity um, the opportunity to really encounter God, as John was saying, in the small ways, in the little ways. I'm thinking even about Elijah's journey in the time of his greatest conflict. I think his best encounter, if you were to ask him, was that time when he came out the cave and everything that happened, he thought God was in it, but he was in a slow, small voice. It got to him. It, it dealt with the issue with Elijah um, that was facing when he felt alone and felt like he was the only one that was making a difference. And it's such as the same with us, you know, when we face the trials or face the tribulations, there are going to be times when it might be done big, might be done small, but the beauty of the journey. And as Jesus said, and I think I love this discourse because it's really his last one because you don't really hear him talking in this grand way anymore. And, um, one of the things I love about the joy being made complete and being able to ask in his name, he was basically teaching his disciples, you have more access to me now than you did before. Before you didn't ask anything in my name. But now you're coming now into a place you're going to gain more access to me than you did before. You're going to have more access to the power of my name. You're going to have more access to the nature of my name. And everything that you're going to go through, if you just, you know, cling fast and hold close to that name, you know, um, I know oh, for those that may listen, you say, boy, you sound real apostolic right now. Nah, man, but there's this power in, in, in the name. And as we grow to follow him and as we grow in him, we see the access that he's given us. And it's a wonderful partnership. It's a wonderful what they say to him, a wonderful fellowship. And the more we walk with him and the more we make room for him, you know, is the more that he fellowships with us. It's like in the book of Revelation, he said, if any man hears me, hears my voice, and in Revelation chapter three, I stand at the door and knock. If any man lets me come in, after they hear the knocking, 
I'm, I'm going to have fellowship with everything King James said, because that's God's intent. So I have fellowship with mankind, and mankind have fellowship with him. And it's only really when we make room. Those encounters, those life-changing moments, whether big or small, happens along our way. I love that. Um, love it. And and Gio, the the last take. Um, you have to get into me to see. That was that was pretty good. I like that. Um, uh, for me, when I start, when I focused on seeking His face and not just or solely His hand, just through my journey um, years ago, when I was full time school, full time work ministry everything going on and i'm like wow how am i gonna do this and i really really just my scripture was uh john 15 5 without me you cannot do anything and i would run with that scripture forever and 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 in, in those small encounters and, and me journeying through life and all these different things that were going on uh, the holy spirit just being there god just being there and strengthening me and helping me to get through like you know you're really with me on this journey and i've learned all right you you're, you're in control of this you orchestrated this and from then I, I don't that wasn't the grand moment but that's that's the one i can recall to where it's like you know what i'm gonna continue to seek you and focus on you and not just the things um, because in seeking you, the, the things will come. Right? I'm not worried about the things, but it's focusing on you. The Bible says in, in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God right, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added onto you. Um, and so that, that was my <clears throat> my focus, right? Just um, seeking God and, and everything else will work itself out. Still in the beginning, early stages of this world. So I'm working through that uh, right now. But I'm trying to remember when did like I start to like work on that. I don't remember exactly when I started to work uh, on that. But I know I got a message from somebody. I don't I don't I don't remember who. But uh, I'm I'm working not working I'm working. Excuse me. I'm working on on that right now. Just being able to see from a different lens and not focus on my stuff but be able to draw more closer to the heavenly father and with commitment and me just continue to work I'll be able to just continue to work on that. It, it, yeah and it's okay you you do have to while you're walking with him you are working it out so there's a good simultaneous um, parallel that is happening you know um for for me we go back to that original question. We'll open up this discussion. I know for me that that transition. I think it, in a lot of cases, and if you hear from a lot of us, it's more through so like life, or more so like how we did. Or it wasn't in the four walls of the church. Maybe that we got the starting place. Maybe it was the starting place. Maybe it was the point of conversation. For me, I, I knew that, that that it started there, but as I began to really grow in life. And, and and go through um, some things and also seeing God's hand in my life and, and understanding why that really helped me. I think it's a great scripture to go with in John 15 to understand that or it's in him. For mine, it was what Paul said in, in, um, in Acts and in Romans, rather, it's in me you live and move and have your being. And really understanding and growing in that um, reality. And I think as you just look at it from what was happening in John 16, as he's closing out um, this last great speech or impartation to the disciples, he, you know, he said, I'm telling you all this so that your joy we may complete. He was literally telling them that, yo, on your journey, you're gonna, some of y'all are going to betray me. And some of y'all are going to scatter. Some of y'all, y'all going to, these are things that are going to have to happen. But in order for your joy to be made complete, that's going to be a part of the process. The, the, not just the beauty of the walk, but even the ugliness, the ugly moments of the walk. And a lot of times we don't really uh, pour out or share sometimes the ugliness of the walk. Because it's understandable. Um, there's a difference between transparency and being translucent. Not everybody needs to know what's up on your journey because some people can't handle it. Or, you know, that's a different, that's a different conversation for another day. But, 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 but there, is a, there, is a, there is a beauty in the walk. And um, sometimes, it's not just we, we highlight that, but sometimes 
we should highlight the, the ugly points because that's the point. Because, you know, Peter denying Jesus wasn't pretty. But this man, Peter, after the, he let the Holy Ghost have, uh, have his way, as we say in Acts chapter 2, preach one of the greatest sermons of all time that 3,000 got saved in one shot. But his journey, you saw the ugliness of it when he said, I don't even know who this man is. But for, in order for the joy to be made complete, you need to have that, you know, not just the beauty of the joy of the thing, because there's some things that I, I mean, I'll put a little bit of it out there. There's some things that I'd be like, Lord, I don't understand what and why you made this happen. There's, a, there's, some, things, there's some things that, you yo, this is ugly right now. This is not a good phase in, in, in our walk. Not, not saying I'm not walking with you, but it's like there's some things I'm trying to wrestle and grapple with understanding as a man, as a young man, you know. As first sign of all the young Christians that will be listening, there's the, not just the beauty of the walk, but finding God in the ugliness of the walk and the mistakes that has to happen. That's where the joy is complete because like, oh, it's like what Donnie said in, in one of his last um, good song hits. There is, there is God. That's where he is. Not just in the beauty of your journey, but in those ugly places, in the places where you do mess up, in the places where you are broken. And as he mends you as his vessel, he mends you with gold and refines you. That's why I just love that terminology, love that thing, because it, it, it's not always pretty. Uh, even the encounters, when we encounter God, sometimes not always pretty, because sometimes he's rebuking us. He's dealing with stuff about us that's stubborn and that we don't want to let go of, you know? And it, it's the beauty of the journey. And that's where our joy is complete, not just in those good encounters, but those times when he has to talk to us and some of those things where we have to wrestle with him. Also. I'm done. I wanna, nah, keep preaching, bro. I wanna, <laughs> hey, keep I preaching, wanna, man. <laughs> Yo, so all right. I'm gonna so I'm gonna be transparent. He talked about translucent. I'm gonna be transparent. So I'm saying to myself, like as as we're talking, I'm like, I want to reveal to you guys like what God revealed to me. And I'm just like, now nah, I'm good. We just gonna keep it light. I ain't gonna say nothing. And then he goes and he says this, and I'm like, and he's like, you know, I might sound apostolic, and I'm like, oh, this guy, man. So long story short, I'm reading about how Paul is, was asking at first to have this thorn removed from his side. And he's like, nah, I'm not even praying that way anymore. I'm just like, pray my strength that I can continue in this walk. I'm not praying to be taken out of this prison. I'm not praying for this thorn to be taken out of my side because in this ugliness, there's still joy for me to find in Christ. And, then, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me the same thing. I'm like, this thing that I want to get out of me, I have to go through this refining process. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Don't remove the sickness that's inside of me until I have grasped what you want me to get. Like, I want to be able to think like how Paul was thinking. And the only way I can do that is if I continue to journey with you. Then and only then I want you to make me whole. Because I don't want I don't want what you have for me to happen prematurely and then I go back. And, I, and it's just like, you know, when he hit me with that, I was just like, I finally see. Like Paul could have easily been sending letters to Corinthians, Romans, and, and, and all the different churches. And hey, yo, just, just pray down the walls of God. Just pray on the kingdom of heaven and ask God to get me out of here. Please pray for my... No. Pray that God continues to give me the strength to send you these letters, to encourage you, to, to, to share the word of God. That's just a whole different mindset. And that comes from that, that constant refining, that constant level of maturity. I never even looked at what the way you said with Peter, like he went from whose lens is this? I don't know this Jesus dude you're talking about to preaching and saving 3000. I'm in church right before service start with the opening prayer, asking God to just save one. <laughs> and, and this dude is saving 3000 going from, I don't even know who Jesus is. Like, so that's, that's my testimony, right? There's something inside of me, right? And that sickness inside my body. And I'm just like, don't take it away because that sickness is there from the thing that I want to get out of me. The reason why the sickness is there. And I'm just like, you know what? 
the thing that I want to come out of me and do away with, this trait that I have, don't take it away until I've, I've been made whole. So continue to have your way, continue to refine me. I'm going to enjoy the ugly right now because it's a part of the process as we just heard so that I can be made whole and ultimately I'll have that great joy that Jesus speaks of. So I appreciate you, brother. That was just confirmation. Thank you. <laughs> I, don't mind, I hope you don't mind me jumping in again. Uh, that's that's the that's the process of healing, and it's an amazing thing. And you know, not to veer off, but that's really what he was talking about in the verses in the twenties when he's talking about before you didn't have that access to my name, and um, before you didn't, you didn't, you, you don't understand it. You didn't understand gravity of having access to me because there's a lot of us that grow up in church, and the sad paradigm is, is that a lot of people grow up in church but not understand the full access they had to his name and to his person and to his nature. But the beauty of what happened here in John 16 is that Jesus let them know you have access to me and you've grown in access to me, not just because you've walked with me and for every day of the last three and a half years of your life. But this is the promise that God, the Father gave to me to give to you. And if you read it in the previous verses, you understand the one is in the person of the Holy Spirit. But also as he's closing, it's, a, it's the relationship you have with me. And who I'm going to bring to you is going to help you to remember. You remember that time when he fed this, the, this, the 5,000 men and plus because the, the, the creative miracle he did there. Do you remember when he he went out in Gethsemane and he prayed and, and prayed until his sweat became like blood? Do you remember his, his posture when the men came to arrest him? by night and they did it sneakily and he just said yo these are things that don't happen for us do you, you know and even what geo what you're sharing do you remember and it, it, it's for you to say okay do you remember the time where you thought you wouldn't have been well but because you remember you had access to his name and you remember that his grace is sufficient for the journey and that's where the, the that's where yo I, now that's now i grow in faith to say i can really receive my healing because i know one way or another, because your grace, if you understand that your, his grace is sufficient, that's now the joy being complete growing in you. Because a lot of times we don't let, if we just a lot, if we just go through the church motions and just say, you know, I'll go to Friday night church, I'll go to Sunday morning church, whether virtual or in person. If you just live off of that, you're not going to say, you're not going to have that complete joy because life happens, challenges happen. But if you don't have him at the core, and leading you, just as Jesus was showing them in the three and a half years. If you don't have me, you're not, you're not going to have what it takes to sustain in the world. I'm the blueprint. That's what he's basically saying when he said, you know, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. You're going to have suffering, but be of good cheer. I'm the blueprint. I've overcome. Yes, you can overcome in the 21st century because I'm still the blueprint. And if you take that and embrace that, because that, that's the part that's been speaking to me so much. He's the blueprint. Jesus is the blueprint. How we overcame, I can overcome. And that's what's restored grace to me and strengthened my ability to believe when it felt dark, when it felt like I, didn't, I, I had no, I, it, it was nice. It was a good run. But no, it, it gave me, it, 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 it invigorated me to know that he's still the blueprint. Doesn't matter what where we are in life, he's the blueprint. And that's the beauty of the disciples. That's the beauty of the journey. Amen. Two weeks in a row, I was able to get two sermons last week. The, the Holy Spirit was breaking in Brother Jazzy. He went off for I think a good 25 minutes. We got a good 25 minute sermon from Brother Jazzy last week. Now this week we got a good, I think that's at least about like an eight minute sermon. So next week it gotta be you, Jill. You gotta come with something. And it ain't got to be nothing. And you just out here uh, sermon snatching. <laughs> but that's fine, brother. I I'm glad that we're inspiring you to be the great the great you, right? And and just keep digging. Um, we're going to keep sharpening each other, as the word says, right? Um, a lot of great takeaways. That, that, that nine-month process, right? Like, you go through it. And on the outside, on the other side of it, there's just great joy. And even what you said, um, Nate, it's about the, uh, it's, 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 it's like a cliche, but when it really hits you, it hits different. 
There's power in the name of Jesus. Like you hear it all the time, but until it, it really sinks and it hits you, it just hits different. So, you know, a lot of great takeaways today. I, I mean, I, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> That's right. You feeling good? Are you feeling encouraged, bro? Feeling it. I'm. I'm. I'm feeling it. I'm. I'm. I'm feeling. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a feeling it. I just, yeah, I'm not explaining, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. Well, I, I, I love, I love coming together with my brothers to be able to discuss the word iron, to be able to charm iron. And the example of the nine months is that's a really good example that I never, um, really thought of, and it's a, actually a wonderful comparison, and. Uh, my, my biggest takeaway for today is to continue to join there to God, continue to join there, um, give up myself in order to get closer uh, to him. Um, like Gio, Gio said, it's, it's, how much, it's how much of the Holy Spirit have you, not how much of you have the Holy Spirit. So I'll make sure I, I keep that message in my head in, the, uh, in this new week that I'm going in. And yeah, I'm pretty much a little worried after that. <laughs> any any more takeaways? I'm good. Uh, amazing. Um, love the the examples and and the analogies that were used. Um, I think Brother John spoke in the beginning a little bit about uh, the gospel, right, and, and really understanding the meaning of it, and then us taking advantage of the opportunity that we have to share it, right. Um, and I was speaking to Melissa about this. I was telling her, like, it doesn't have to be that deep sometimes. You don't have to get up there and preach. Like, it, it could just be a conversation that you have with somebody. And it doesn't have to be a conversation. Uh, do you go to church? Do, do you believe? Do you serve? Oh, you, it could be listening, right? A lot of times Jesus sat and he listened. and He, he communed with the people, right? He sat and he, he availed himself to them, right? A lot of times that's how we can sow that seed. We sit there and we, we listen, right? And then obviously we, we allow the Holy Spirit to use us and ask him what to say and what to do. Um, but that was, that was encouraging for me and, and just a reminder um, that it, it, we don't have to get up and preach all the time. That it, it can just be a conversation that we have with our coworker, right? And I was telling Gio this, I'm transitioning into a new job and, and I, I, I want God to go with and use me, right? Um, as, as I get in this job, because sometimes I get timid, um, even as a minister, you know, sharing, right? What do I say? How, how do I put it, right? I don't want to overcomplicate it. I don't, you know, I, and so because of that, I, I don't say nothing. I, I just, I listen, I just, okay. And I walk away and I leave the situation alone, but I really want to be intentional about that, right? Um, listening and, and God, where can I have input in this conversation, right? That would allow these people to see you in the midst of what they're going through. Right. And again, it, it doesn't have to be a full book. It doesn't have to be a sermon, but um, just listening and availing myself. And, and like Nate said, Jesus is the blueprint. Right. So I'm um, just following his ways, how he had dialogue with people. Right. How he met them where they were. Right. He didn't overcomplicate um, what he was trying to say to them. Right. He used parables. He made it relatable. Um, so that was encouraging for me. And my biggest takeaway. I really enjoyed the dialogue. For real. That when you're talking about Jesus being the blueprint, that was the big the deal for me in reading and coming in to today, and um that to, to just share that reality, um to me like <clears throat> as you just spoke just now, Jave, you know, King to the also is the Book of Acts. We preach a lot of the great things that happen in the Book of Acts, and if you really actually just simply dissect it, even fill up with the unit. The, 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 the African unit it was a conversation. <laughs> we could preach out, you know, it was a simple conversation. Um, yeah, Peter did preach in Acts 2, but everything else happened with Acts just it was through either through conversation, through preaching, through demonstrating. And Jesus was lifting them to understand that it's just, look at my life, look at I did it through communication, through I had to preach. Yeah, Jesus did preach. Jesus did some radical stuff too, but he also said, listen demonstrated and that's what he's bringing us to the place to doing so you know um oh boy i only have one 
final thought, and I'll just leave with the scripture that Gio brought up to us to remind uh, the last scripture for today's reading. Jesus plainly said, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. We got peace in the overcomer. So that's that's really, it all sums back going back to where you want that peace, it's in Jesus. Um, I know me and they had this joke about being opposite. I was raised apostolic, so I'm, 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 I'm Jesus' name, baby. So, you know, I'll, I'll talk about the name in a second. Um, but it's, it's all in the name. It's all in Jesus. So that's that's really, at the end of the day, you want peace, it's in Jesus. You want deliverance, it's in Jesus. Everything you need is in Jesus. He's an overcomer. And because he's an overcomer and I'm in him, I can overcome as well. Jesus can feed you some food. It will be a spiritual food, not physical. What do you <laughs> That just came to my head. I, I, I had to say it. I had to say it. Uh, I got to be getting into the closing prayer, brother. Amen. Father, thank you. Oh, God, we just bless you. We just take the time to really just thank you. Thank you for um, being, being, being the unveiler of secrets and, 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 and showing us things about you that we didn't know before. And for that, we thank you for the relationship. We thank you for the friendship that we have with you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for loving us. To those that may listen, you might not know you in the pardon of their sins. Thank you that you know them and that you love them where they are, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you had you had you had them, you you had them on your mind, even to the day of your crucifixion when you died and you rose again. You did it just for us. And Father, for that, we just take a moment to just say thank you. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we have together. We thank you that, as uh, the scripture reminded us that, yes, in this world, we'll have trouble. We're in the middle of living in trouble. But what makes us resilient, what keeps our heart, the believer, um, in tune is that we have you, our blessed Savior, Lord Jesus. We have you as the blueprint. Father, you came, you lived, you died, you rose again. And you and you model the blueprint for us that, that it's not impossible to live in this world in this time frame. Lord God, I thank you that you've given us the blueprint and it's in your name and we have access to so much things in your name. So Father, I pray for the listeners and for us today that you strengthen us, that you'll encourage us continually, that you'll heal us, not only just physically, but in the, also in, in our soul. And, and Father, just strengthen our spirit, Father God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will uh, touch, heal, deliver through the playing and through the broadcasting of this, Lord Jesus. Also, thank you for each brother. Bless their families. Thank you for the increase in, in their lives. Thank you for what you're doing in their li lives and what you're showing them and how you're revealing yourself to them in everyday life, Lord God. Continue to do it in the marriages. Continue to do it for those that have family. Continue to do it in those that are coming up in life. Continue to do it, though, and those that are navigating single or navigating so many different phases of life, business, career, everything. Father, do it in their life. Let them see you and let them be encouraged by something that was said today and not to be afraid of the beauty and the ugliness of the journey of following you, Lord Jesus, because we know that it's actually in all of that that our joy in you is made complete. So thank you that in you we have all and then thank you that in you we live and move and have our being. Continue to bless, continue to restore, continue continue to refine us, continue to grow us in your grace and in the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wow, Brother Javé just disappeared. Okay. <laughs> oh, I closed my eyes. Uh, he was there a while. He was going. Uh, this is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you so much for Brother Gio, Brother Javé. Then Daniel and Brother John for um, coming today to be able to share their thoughts, iron to be able to sharpen iron. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on your post notifications. That way, anytime I upload, YouTube will send you a notification. This is the end of the video. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys next week in another episode of Bible Study. Bye.